Uh, we talked about tools earlier. <clears throat> so stabilizing at the job site is, is, uh, is, is really a key because the longer tools sit in water, they're just going to get rustier. So if we get to a job and tools are sitting in water, get them out of the water and I mean you could dunk them in WD-40. All we're trying to do is displace the water. It'll just save us time on the cleaning side so that we don't have even more of a rust buildup. So this is a two-step process. And the reason it's a two-step process is we have to remove the soot, and tools are generally also greasy, and then I have to remove the rust. And we know we have two different chemistries. We have a, an alkaline chemistry, and we have a acidic chemistry. If I mix the two together, it's not like I'm going to get a one-step action. I'm basically going to have worth, worthless water. So the step is I've got to take the basket, of put a basket of tools into the ultrasonics, clean off all the soot, take that basket, go to my rinse sink and rinse all that soot off that's left over, or mainly the soap. I want to make sure I get all the soap out because I don't want to have drag out. I don't want to drag my alkaline chemistry into my acidic tank. Then I'm going to take it back into my ultrasonic tank and I'll have a, a separate tank called a saddle tank. It'll just be another tank within a tank and I'll have a different chemistry. I'll clean that basket of tools now that are no, now clean of all the soot. They're rusty, but they have no more soot on them. And I'll run it in the ultrasonics, in the acid, and I'll clean it until I basically get all the rust off. So how long will that take? Could be three minutes, could be 10 minutes, could be somewhere in between. It depends on how much of rust buildup you have. So that uh, rusty, cleaning rusty tools is a little bit of a trial and error. You basically got to I eyeball the rust and decide, is it light rust, medium rust, or heavy rust? Follow the directions on the bottle, which will tell you the concentration, how many ounces per gallon. And then you will just have to clean it until it's, you've removed the rust. Take it back to your sink, rinse it off with, with water, air dry it. And then here's the critical step with tools. You got to then dip it into some type of a rust preventative. So we have a product called Omega Rust, rust Protectant. And what you're going to do is it's just a dip. It's, you're going to dip it in, let it sit for a moment, you know, maybe 20 seconds, take those tools out, and then let them air dry. You don't want to blow them off with air. You don't want to run them through the tunnel dryer because we don't want to remove that coating. So we'll take the tools and leave them on a table. So we generally do the tools at the end of the day, leave them on a table, let them sit overnight, and then that way we won't get any flash rust. Because what's going to happen is all this is going to go into a, into a repacked box, into a vault, and it's going to sit for six months. What you don't want to do is in six months take them out of the box, back to the client, and they've rusted up. So that rust preventative step is going to be really important. So there's a few extra steps with tools. And that's, again, another reason. There's two reasons I want to do it at the end of the job. One, I'm running a lot more lot higher temperature. I'm running a couple of different chemistries. And there's a couple of steps to it. So, Again, I always like to start delicate, then electronics, general contents, plastics, and then tools last if I have tools in the job.